Greetings to all. Uh, in this uh, course of Python programming, we are going to discuss uh, Python programming starting from the basics to the practical level uh, as deep as possible to make you all understand how easy is Python uh, for uh, application development, project development, uh, interdisciplinary project development, and so on. Right? We will start from uh, a very basic, and uh, I assure that uh, for studying this particular Python course, you don't require any other prerequisite programming course for you. You can have a simple mathematical prerequisite, which is actually enough uh, to go on with this uh, Python course. Right? Yes. Now, why Python? Right now, we need to understand why I need a programming language. Yes, you always need a programming language to make something automatic, uh, systematic, and you make something very powerful. Right? For example, if a particular task is available and you use a human intelligence to perform that particular task, it is uh, more a uh, uh, thing that human are always uh, able to hear this and they may commit something wrong also, they may be tired and so on. Right? We are in the world of automatic uh, things where we connect environment to other, we make everything automatic. So we need a set of programming as a backbone for all our tasks, right? So it is always good for every person starting from a country, computer engineer to a mechanical engineer, to an electronic person, everyone requires a programming support through which he can build his own products interdisciplinary, right? I need such a programming language. I assure that Python is one such good programming language which is easy to learn, interdisciplinary, extendable, and so on, right? This programming language is developed in the year 1980s by Guido van Rosen and it has actually become very popular in the near decade and 2000s i say right at the time prior java is actually the most popular programming language as python was a budding language at that time but now if you see java as a commercial programming language but python emerging as an open source programming language defeating many other programming languages which grow uh, together with Python and some which came before Python also. Right? Python defeated many other programming languages just because its own features. It is not just because domination, it's because of its own features. Initially we had Python 2.x and rapidly many fear uh, versions of Python evolved and now we are in the era of Python 3.x with ultimate variety of features available at Python. We call Python as a very high level programming language. When we say a language very high level, it means that it is actually very uh, good with, with respect to reading and it is also very good with respect to interpreting by a human being. Yes, a human being can easily learn, right? A layman can easily learn Python rather than any other syntactical programming language. Some uh, languages like if you say C, C, C++ or Java, they're extremely cooled with that much syntax and semantics. But in terms of Python, you, have, you need, uh, if I say you need just a normal English, uh, followed by a good mathematical background, yes, you can go ahead with Python logic, right? So Python is also a programming language which supports object-oriented programming, functional programming, procedural programming, and also the normal logic and structured programming. What is all the things that are supported in Python at the same time, it is also easy to understand. That's what, right? Some programming languages like R, which actually support the same criteria, also is a tough competitor of Python in various groups. But still, we, uh, we focus on any one programming language and try to master it. And why not it be Python? That's what our uh, thing, right? So generally, we have a Python for a good kind of application-oriented uh, developments where it supports cryptography, numerical modules, networking modules, good GUI support, and many development capacities are also available in Python. Yes, you will wonder for everything we have a different package provided by a huge uh, open source community supporting it, right? Yes. 
mention some notable features which can draw people's attention towards python as python is actually easy to learn you can easily learn python without much ability and without much uh, prerequisite also right even if you are from a cross background or an entirely non computer science background i assure that this course as well as python will make you mastering python at a much quicker rate right equal to a computer science person right and so python supports with development right starting from a computer engineer to a mechanical person everybody aims for, to learn a programming language ultimately to develop a particular product right i assure that python is having that capacity to make any kind of person to become a developer not only a program writer but a developer who can utilize a particular programming concept or a construct and develop a item which is actually necessary in his own discipline right say it is going to be an electrical discipline or a raspberry pi working or a mechanical engineer everywhere where you require some sort of automation or where you require some part of uh, computer programming yes python will be as part of it and this is actually the era of python where everywhere the python is actually present in terms of automation or programming and python is actually cross platform or platform independent so what is the cross platform right assume that i am also a windows user right i am using python and typing my programs and i developing programs in windows and suddenly i want to switch to an ubuntu system a different os right so i am switching from windows os to an ubuntu os i have my code which is developed in windows machine and i need to switch to a different machine and get it executed there whether it is possible yes of course your python programming is possible and we have this cross platform feature equally in java also in java also i will write here and run anywhere the same concept is available here in python i can write in any machine and run in any other machines there is no restriction on which machine i need to write i will explain you how python makes this possible also right open source this this is actually the thing which is actually a primary feature which made python defeat java i should not say defeat and equal or uh, trespass java's uh, uh, kind of uh, environment right many companies came uh, towards python when uh, java was becoming more commercialized right uh, now all the companies are actually using java in a commercial version but python had its own features and more packages are available still is becoming open source right and a huge community is actually supporting it for example let me take uh, an example uh, called the mongodb right so what is mongodb is uh, uh, let me explain that uh, in the it has a more an abstract term i'll explain that so mongodb is actually a database uh, platform that i can run a structured unstructured and semi structured data right so what is that is i can store images there i can store text there i can store videos everything in the particular database as if it is going to be a storage medium right not all databases will support that feature right and using that particular mongodb is also not that much easy that was easy right so mongodb supports java python and many other things right now many people are actually facing difficulty on not using mongodb why because it is actually a huge kind of and storage which i need to, if i was able to use it then my storage will become, become extremely easy but using it and learning it is not that much easy right so what our open source community of python did they developed a package for that called as pymongo which made all the python users and learners use mongodb very easy right they tough the tough mechanism is there on one side and uh, people of uh, people who are who need that particular mechanism are there on other side in between we keep a bridge called as python and i call that bridge pymongo so because of this particular bridge pymongo those all people tried to use this uh, mongodb at a very easy level right they easily use this mongodb right this kind of support not this is just a simple example likewise many complex things are available 
on uh, industry and fight on the community and the open source people are doing their ultimate uh, uh, thing in solving those issues, right? So why Python is actually becoming more famous and even more uh, user having more customers all over the world, right? Extensible, right? I say, I say it is going to be open source language. Anybody can contribute and extend. If I was giving you a solution, you can extend that solution, right? It is open source. Every every good person, every good programmer, or every good developer can contribute it and extend it, right? So it is extensible, embeddable, right? Starting from first, I'm saying you can you be a, like a mechanical engineer or an electrical engineer or a computer science person. You can combine everything. You can embed everything, and you can use it for your own development. So Python supports it, right? Python is having a huge law standard library and an active community. As I said, an open source community is there. Many different packages and libraries are available to solve complex tasks. Those complex tasks are actually very tough to solve without those packages. If I was directly relying on Python programming. Just because of those packages, these uh, 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 jobs are done at a very easy rate, right? So it is also useful for a wide variety of applications, right? Many applications rely on Python programming to get it solved, right? Many applications are available. In today's world, Python become a core part of various applications and many companies are actually relying on Python and making money, right? Then this much good features Python, right? So everyone will be loving to learn Python, right? So how we are going to start? We are going to start, as I already said, we are going to have this course in a practical fashion. So all our uh, thing is going to go in a uh, practical environment or an interpreter of Python, right? So I'm going to use Windows for the whole uh, course and uh, I'll also explain you how to use Python in other machines also, right? So uh, I have to say uh, the interpreter how to download everything. So we'll go into that, right? So we are going to use an interpreter for this Python IDLE. So Python IDLE is actually a editor of Python, which is actually uh, mostly used by all the Windows users and the initial learners, right? We are also going to rely on Python Idle and uh, later we will be moving on to Jupyter Notebook, which is actually uh, provided by Anavanta Navigator and this is also useful in a different fashion and it is, very, it is actually more interactive also, right? So everything we will learn now as far as uh, uh, initial uh, learnings and taking into concern I will, we will go into python idle right now we have to see how to use python ideally right yes now what i will do is now i'll go to a web browser now uh, what i need is i need to have a uh, python idle download so what i should do I, I need to do a very simple thing i need to go for a google chrome and i need to have uh, python idle download very simple right so i what i will do i'll go to chrome i go to google just type python ideally download for windows even python is available for android phones also called the spydroid and python is actually endless it has everything right so now this is actually my page and the uh, link is actually python.org slash downloads and here you have this python code download python 3.895 this version of python if you click here it will be a downloading python along with uh, some basic packages and GUI terms also and this particular python download uh, link will also give you a command from called as pip we name it as uh, we call it as pip right so pip is actually a, a thing or a command which is actually used to install packages in python you have various packages in python as far as you move in as deep as possible in python you will be uh, using packages of python right whenever you need a package you need to install it and use right so how to install is by using the pip command right 
we will see how to use everything and, and so on. Just understand that this particular uh, Python uh, download will give you the pip uh, command also. Right? Pip also will be downloaded and you can just install it like any other normal software. Right? And I, am, I already have IDLE in my system, so I will not, I will not need to download it. And if I have IDLE, this is uh, the way in which I get uh, my IDLE. My IDLE will look like this. Yes, this is actually the Python interpreter IDLE. Right? This is actually an interactive mode. Python offers two ways of coding. One is uh, interactive mode of coding. Another is programmable way of coding that I will have an editor separately. I will save that file as .py, right? Similar, for example, if you are typing it in a Word document, you will be saving it as .docx. If you type anything in Excel, you will be saving it as .xlsx and so on. Everything will have an extension. Likewise, if you are using C programming, you will be saving it as .c. If you are say, using C++, you will be saving it as .cpp. Likewise, if you are going to write a Python program, you should save it as .py. .py right? Some name .py, right? So saving it as .py and then executing the entire program in the command prompt. This is actually the blended way. And we can also make line by line execution of uh, interactive mode of execution also possible in Python, right? How to do that is very simple. For example, if I want to type like 2 plus uh, 3, right? So what will happen? I just get 5. Just immediately I'll get some answer. Right? There is no assignment or anything. Just uh, having two uh, operands and an operator plus just making addition. Just you say 2 plus 3, it will give some answer. Right. So if I say 2 star 5, it will be giving me 10 star for multiplication. Similarly, if I say uh, 8 divided 2, it will be giving me 4.0. And so on, right? Uh, even learning about the arithmetic operations of Python by itself is actually a, a very nice thing compared to other programming languages. Even those who are master C or C++, after knowing about uh, these kind of use cases of Python, they will be grabbed into Python. They will be going, pulling into Python to learn it. Why? Right? Because it is that much easy to deal with data types in Python. Right. So this is actually the interactive mode of uh, Python interpreter. And if I want to print anything, just to say, I want to print hello Python. Right. And just what I will say, just print hello Python. Right. That's it. Right. If I want to print anything, I will just say print. Right. So uh, in a layman fashion, I can say how to learn Python is if you know English and have some mathematics with some logical uh, uh, brain, you can actually master Python. That's it. Right? No much general syntax or semantics involved in Python. And not that much strict behavior is also there in Python like other programming languages. In this way, very, very high level programming languages, I underline that, bold to the data like that, this high, high, high level programming. So it is actually very easy to learn, right? Going back, uh, Yes, we, know we have some other uh, editors also possible, including Vim, Emacs, uh, Notepad++, PyCharm, Eclipse, and so on. Many other editors are also possible. And these editors actually uh, make uh, Python uh, uh, be executed in some other paradigm, save it as .py file, and get it executed in the command prompt. Right, this is actually the way. We are actually very well suitable with IDLE, and we can Go away to Jupyter notebook also. You know, in case of Ubuntu or some other uh, uh, OS, if you use, yeah, ideally, is also supported in uh, Ubuntu. And uh, if I, if I, if for initial learners, those who say, uh, use Ubuntu, I actually appreciate them. Why? Because Ubuntu is considered as a home of Python. Why? Because Python is open source, and all the open source operating systems have Python built in. Right? We don't want to install it separately. It has Python built in, and you can directly use Python there. Right? So, if you, but uh, for initial learners and most of uh, most of the users being uh, 
part of Windows, we use IDLE here as an interpreter of Python, right? And uh, the coming to how this interpreter works, right? I say Python is actually cross-platform, right? So I can run in on a machine and I can make it possible uh, to execute in some other machine also. By machine, I mean the operating system, right? I have any different operating system like Windows, Ubuntu, Debian, and so on, right? I have any different operating system. How Python is becoming a uh, platform independent or uh, cross platform future is coming in Python, right? Usually, any programming language uh, I write will be normally relying on English language because I know English. So I use some sim syntax and semantics and I write my programming code. Right? If I want to convert that code into a machine understandable fashion, I will convert that into something called this bytecode. Right? I will convert that into something called this bytecode. So what is actually called this uh, uh, bytecode is bytecode is actually a machine understandable code. So my English statements, which I write as some syntax, will be converted into something called this bytecode. This bytecode will be understood by the machine in, and it will start executing in, the, in its own language, right? Uh, assume that bytecode is language of that machine, right? So usually this is the case when you give either a C program or a C++ program, this conversion actually takes place. If my interpreter or a compiler, right, is not able to convert my Python code into a bytecode, then it means that I, my code is having an error, right? So when error comes, when error comes, when my my program, right, say it is an English uh, kind of file, is not able to be completely converted into a bytecode. If that is not possible, then it will say yeah, it is facing some difficulties in terms of errors, right? This is actually the uh, actual case which happens in all the programming languages. But in case of Python, what actually happens is, here also the Python code will be converted into bytecode, but not the bytecode of the machine, right? A particular machine. They will be converted into a bytecode of a particular Python virtual machine, right? It is not only the bytecode of Windows, a bytecode of Debian, a bytecode of uh, Ubuntu. It is not a particular bytecode. It is going to convert it into a bytecode of a virtual machine, right? So this virtual machine, this particular V, can be substituted with Windows, Ubuntu, or Debian, and so on, right? I'm not going to generate bytecode of a Windows machine, or I'm not going to generate bytecode of a Ubuntu machine, or so on. I'm going to develop a bytecode of a virtual machine, right? This virtual machine will serve as a medium to get it executed in any other machine, right? This particular bytecode will be, when it is available in Windows, it will be transformed in the fashion of Windows. If it is made available in Ubuntu, it will be transformed in the fashion of Ubuntu. If it is made available in Debian, it will be transformed into the fashion of Debian and so on. Right? This is actually the thing. So this is how Python become a platform independent or cross platform. Right? Right? Similarly, if I, if we, as we discussed just now, Python R R comes in two ways. One is uh, a normal mode of execution, and there is interactive mode of execution. Python is either available as normal mode or an interactive mode. This particular interactive mode is possible uh, when you run it in command prompt by using some editors like IDLE, Jupyter, and so on. Right? You can be executing in line. Right? Normal mode of execution is writing a uh, uh, Python file and then executing it as a uh, .py file in some other interpreter. That is actually normal mode. And interactive mode will be called by the name called this read, eval, print, loop. Right? You must read a statement, evaluate it, and then print it. That is actually the case, and we will call it as REPA. Right? I, I will read a statement, I will evaluate it, immediately print it. Next, go to the other, next line, right? So this is actually called as REPL. So it is more interactive. I do not wait if I have 10 lines of code. I don't want to, uh, that my, my compiler to be 
patient and they see all the 10 lines and get execution and start, start with execution. Each time we complete a line, I can make it uh, execute and give me the result, right? That is actually called as interactive mode, line by line execution as we call it, right? So once my line gets terminated, the thing will be executed, right? That is actually called as interactive mode. So interactive mode is also uh, available in beta. Right. Now coming to a normal mode, what I say do is I'll have a .py file. I will make, uh, for example, I will write print hello world in an empty file, and then just I'll save the file file as .py and run it in a interpreter. That is actually called as uh, normal mode. In interactive mode, it is very good, uh, useful for initial uh, 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 syntax learnings for Python, where I will just type something and then I'll get it uh, executed. Uh, the most important thing to note here is the difference between uh, Python uh, 2.x and Python 3.x. Right? So, for example, to uh, provide an easy kind of explanation here, here I say print hello world in double quotes, right? But before that, in the idle platform, we type it in brackets, right? In Python 2.x, we don't require that bracket actually, but in uh, uh, Python uh, 3.x, we actually require it. In Python 3.x, we actually require brackets to be used, right? So these are the things what we actually uh, say here. Right. So, uh, for example, if I say two star file, we'll be getting ten. If I say two star hello string, right? So what will happen is, uh, uh, hello string is actually called as hello world, right? So what will happen? Hello world, hello world will be repeated two times. So I'm just saying two into a particular string. So it is actually called as repetition, right? Many good features are available in Python. And they're very uh, doing something doing the same in a very easy fashion, right? So, uh, learning Python is not that much difficult, and using Python is also not that much difficult. The only thing what you need to concentrate is how logical sense you are going to apply and what logical sense you are going to build your program. That logical mind is actually required here, right? Other than that, learning a programming language is actually very easy. The thing where the problem lies is the logical thinking, right, to solve problems. That will be coming when you do that much practices, right? So in this uh, uh, particular video, what we have seen is we have got an introduction about a programming language, uh, and uh, you know, very brief history of Python, features of Python, such as uh, it is easy to use, extendable, uh, embeddable and uh, it is open source and having a huge set of community to support it and it can be used for developing many softwares and uh, having and being as a core part of many industries uh, for developing products and python is cross-platform why because it has a python virtual machine support and python comes uh, with uh, two modes of execution, one is normal mode of execution and the other is interactive mode of execution. And we have seen how to download a Python interpreter called as Python IDLE, which we are going to use uh, for initially for this uh, course to learn the practical things. Right? So thank you for this video. We will continue uh, my depth things in a doubt, such as data types, everything. In the next video. Thank you.